Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for July 3rd, 2020. That's right, it is Friday, which means we're going to be talking about HashiCorp Vault and the Vault certification. Specifically today, we're going to be talking about Vault policies. Now, if you've been watching for the past few days, you might notice that I'm still wearing the purple shirt from Wednesday, and that's because I recorded this on Wednesday. I am on vacation, but that doesn't mean that the learning stops. We are going to talk about vault policies, so strap in and get ready to go. Before we jump into that, I just want to remind everybody, in case you didn't know, I actually have two courses on Pluralsight all about HashiCorp Vault. The first is Vault getting started. It's a beginner course. And then the second one is managing HashiCorp Vault. And that's once you're thinking about rolling Vault into production, how do you build it out? How do you manage and maintain it? If you're looking to pass the Vault certification, that first course is probably for you. So, you know, check it out if you have a Pearl Site subscription. If you don't have a subscription, ping me because I actually have a few 30 day passes available. So if you ping me on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever, I will try to get you one of those before I run out. So, with that out of the way, let's check in. How you doing? It's Friday, and the thing that I'm most excited about is Hamilton is coming out on Disney. Now, I never got to see Hamilton in the theaters, but I love the soundtrack, and I'm really pumped to see the live, and it's live action, but the movie version of it. I hope they kept everything in. I'm just super pumped to watch it. So that's probably what I'm doing right now while you're watching this, is watching Hamilton. So uh, get out there and enjoy that. It's very, I don't know, I'm super pumped about that. But, uh, you know, this is, I want to make sure I have enough time to talk about Vault. So let's get into this. Vault policies. Okay, so this is the second terminal objective for Vault, is understanding and, well, creating Vault policies is the terminal objective. And then there are four, count them four, enabling objectives. The first one is illustrate the value of Vault policy. The second one is describe vault policy syntax for paths. The third one is describe vault policy syntax for capabilities. And then the fourth one is craft a vault policy based on requirements. So let's see how far we can get through all of these objectives because four is a lot and this is a broad topic, but we'll get as far as we can. Let's see what happens. Okay, so what what is a vault policy? A vault policy is basically the who, what, and where. It governs what someone can do and where they can do it in vault. In fact, if I read directly from the documentation, this is a good quote. Policies provide a declarative way to grant or forbid access to certain paths and operations in vault. And implied in that is that you are granting or forbidding access to a user or a machine. Okay, so that is what the policy is for. What is the value of the vault policy? This first objective, illustrate the value of vault policy. Well, the, the value is right there in the statement. You can grant or forbid access to certain paths and operations for certain people and machines. That's what it does. It's declarative and it's pretty straightforward. Okay, cool, policy. Now, the second one is describe vault policy syntax in terms of paths. Before we do that, I just want to describe the syntax at a high level. Basically, it's a bunch of configuration blocks, and each block is defining a policy statement. Now, it's generally written in HCL, or HashiCorp configuration language, because of course it is. This is a HashiCorp product, but you could also write it in JSON if you hate yourself. I recommend sticking with HCL for this one. It's just, it's a little bit easier to read and write. And basically, what each block is, is a path, where you want to define uh, what can happen at, at that path. And then within the block are the capabilities you want to grant or deny for that path. And then any specific parameters about the values on that path. Okay, totally makes sense. Now, let's describe the path portion of this. It's important to understand, and I really want to hammer this home, and I do this in the course as well, everything in Vault is a path. Everything is a path. Your secrets engines, your authentication methods, even uh, your tokens, your system properties of the vault, uh, you know, internals itself, everything's available on a path of some kind, which means policies can govern everything about vault. That's awesome. Now that path is going to be what looks like a typical file system path. It's going to be slash auth 
slash method slash something else, you know, depending on what you're trying to restrict. But the path basically looks like a file path. It also looks like a path that you would use in the API. And because everything's driven by the Vault API, it makes sense that everything is a path. Okay, so that's how you would decide what you want to grant access to is via this path. There are some special characters when it comes to the path. There's two of them. One is the plus sign and the other is the asterisk or star sign or whatever you want to call it. Some people call it splat. In the documentation, they call it the glob. I've never heard that before, but okay, we'll go with that, the glob. So what is the plus sign for? The plus sign serves as a wild card for any particular entry within the path. So if you have a path of secrets slash Ned slash stuff, but you really want to do any path that is secrets slash something slash path, then you can put the plus sign in place of Ned. And now it will match on anything that is secrets slash something slash path stuff. And so that is very useful if you know you're going to have a consistent ending to your path and beginning, but the middle might be a little, eh, not sure exactly what it's going to be. Maybe it's a, every user has one of these or every item category has one of these paths and you just wanna like set permissions for all of them. So it's a good way to summarize. The star or the splat or the glob, whatever you wanna call it, that goes at the very end of the path. It's the only place it's valid for and it will just match anything that is that path plus some more of a path or characters. So if it was secrets slash Ned slash stuff star, then it would match stuff slash keys, stuff slash stuffed animals. It would match anything that has that beginning path to it. So those are the two sort of placeholders that you can use to make your policy pass a little more flexible. There is one more option. I don't know if this comes up in the exam, but you can do, they're calling it variable placement, but really what it is, is it looks at the identity of the token that's being used against this policy. So I probably didn't mention this, but policies are attached to tokens. So when you get a token from Vault, it's going to have policies attached to it. And that's how policies get associated with a user or a machine. It's all down to that token. That token, has information about your identity as well. And it can take that identity information and swap it into the path to make the policy make sense. So if you have a bunch of users and every user is getting their own key value secret store, then you can create a policy that substitutes in that identity as part of the path so that you can write one policy to govern the permissions for all users for their individually unique key value stores. That's one good example of where you would use this. Okay, so, so far we've covered path. We haven't even gotten into capabilities. Oh boy, oh, this might be a two-parter. <clears throat> no, I think I, I can get it in. Okay, so that's path. Path is where, where, and then capabilities are what? What, what can someone do or what can a token or the identity behind a token do at this path? And it's basically the standard create, read, update, delete. And then there's a few additional actions, list, deny, and sudo. So most of those is pretty obvious what it means. You can create stuff, you can read something, you can update something, you could delete something. Update, another word for modify, essentially. You can also list the contents of what's on a path. If you're associating the list capability, then you would associate that with a path and not with the ending of a path. So secrets slash Ned slash, and then you would be able to list anything that is at the end of that path. So it could be stuff and keys and other things that I have inside secrets slash Ned. Okay, so that are those are some of the operations. Deny just means that you're denying all operations on that path. So there might be specific cases where you just don't want anyone able to do operate. You don't want the person or machine that has that token to be able to perform any operations at this path, but you might be allowing other operations around that path. An important thing to note is that if permissions are not explicitly given for a path, then the deny is implicit. So that's just like firewall rules. The deny is always implicit. 
Okay, there's one more and it's called sudo. And this is for privileged operations. So these are very specific privileged operations you don't want just anyone doing. And you'd have to look through the documentation to see what all of those privileged operations are. But basically, if it seems like it's pretty important to the integrity of Vault, you might need sudo permissions. So even though you have create and read and update and all of those permissions for a path, if you don't have sudo, you can't do that privileged operation. That's good to know. So there might be a, a question on a test that <laughs> checks to see whether you understand that sudo is required for something. So just bear that in mind. Think about that. Okay, and I'm already over time. So that is the first three objectives, more or less, but there's actually more to capabilities. And I guess I'm gonna have to create another video around this objective to round out the capabilities information and also talk a little bit about the last objective, which was craft a vault policy based on requirements. So maybe we can run through a couple examples to make it clear how you would craft a policy for a secrets engine or maybe an authentication method or something like that. So I think that's what I'm going to do for the next vault video. So stay tuned for that. That will be next week, the 10th. <laughs> so I'm doing this, you know, one a week and we'll slowly work our way through here. Uh, if you have questions, suggestions, feel free to hit me up. I'm very easy to find and very easy to talk to. And if you're looking for one of those uh, free passes to Pluralsight to take my vault course, hit me up on Twitter or on LinkedIn. I only have a few, like 10, I think, but you know, it doesn't hurt to reach out and maybe I still have some uh, and you can take the course for free. <laughs> That'd be kind of nice. Uh, with that, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and share if you don't mind. I really appreciate it. It helps me reach more people. And until next week, stay healthy and stay safe. Thanks.